Welcome to New Covenant Church Edmonton, where the praise is high, the worship is intense, there is love for all people, and our prayers are answered in Jesus' name. Our pastors are Pastor Tayo and Pastor Bimbo Arawajolu, and we worship at 65 Church Street in Edmonton at 10.30 a.m. every Sunday. We also have midweek service at the same location every Wednesday at 7 p.m. During the current lockdown, we are worshipping at the same time, but via YouTube and Facebook premiere. If you're interested in joining the NCC family or just want to know a little bit more about our services, please leave your email in the comment box or send us an email at nccedmonton.ad at gmail.com. Alternatively, you can send a message to 07889 080 268 and a member of our welcome team will be in touch. God bless you as you've joined us today and enjoy the service. Oh, good morning, wherever you are, whatever you are watching this video from. I bring to you the joy of Christ, the joy of today, the fourth Sunday in the month of May 2020. This is the first time you and I are seeing this day. So therefore, we want to commit it to God's hands. This is the first time you are seeing 20, May 2020. So we want to commit it to God's hands. This is New Covenant Church Edmonton, where the praise is high, the worship is intense, and our lives are changed to the glory of God. So I'm here to do the opening prayer for our service of today. Father, we bless your holy name. Jehovah, you are good, you are great. You are wonderful, you are a counselor, you are the prince of peace, you are the king of kings, you are the king of glory, you are the mighty God. We are here today to just give you all the glory. To say, Father, we are thank, we are, we thank you. Father, we are grateful for all that you have done for us. You are creator. You are our potter. You just mold us the way you want. Mold us, mold us, mold us. Father, we thank you for being our deliverer, for being our healer, for being our provider, for being our creator. Father, we bless you for being the day star. We thank you because it's a brand new day, it's a brand new month, month, oh Lord. Father, we thank you for being our savior. We thank you for being the I am that I am. We thank you for being our wisdom, our fortress, our, uh, uh, the, the God that we can rely on, the gracious God, the faithful one, the merciful God. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we are grateful for providing for us even during this period, oh Lord. We thank you for all the resources that you have given to us. We can eat, we can drink. Father, we bless your holy name. We are here, we are still standing despite all. You are our Jehovah Jireh, you are our Jehovah Shalom. We thank you for being our defender. Even when we sleep, we don't know what is going on. Thank you for defending us up till this moment and forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for being our comforter. A lot has been going on around. Lord, you are the only one that is saved right now. You are the only God. I, I spoke to our women this morning and I said to them that you are the, God is the only one that is saved. God is the only one that has it all together. The Almighty God. None of us can say our head is 100% correct at this moment in time. But we are here to just rely on God. We are relying on God. We are relying on God. Being our instructor, our teacher, our defender, the one that we can hold on to throughout this month of May and forever. More, oh Lord, the visible God, the hope of glory, the Lion of Judah. Father, we bless your holy name. Why don't you join me? Just calling him names, call him names. Verse secondary shakti pakantia hirake. Our mistrava, the silencer, the stiller of storms. Yes, I love that one. The stiller, the stiller of storms. I will steal all the storms around us. Why don't you call him a name this morning? Call him whatever you want to call him. Is the truth, is the life, is the way, is the way maker. Father, we bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. You can call him the author, you can call him the finisher. Our God is glorious in holiness. He's fearful in praises. This God is so good to serve. Why don't you join me this morning and just give all the glory to this sleepless God. To this sleepless God. To this excellent God. To this eternal God. Father, we bless you. We all know you. To this compassionate God. To this faithful God. Loving God. Very kind God. Worthy God. Father, we bless you for being our builder, our overseer, our breaker, our way maker, our changer. Father, we bless your holy name. Our helper, our helper. I love that one. Our helper. God is our helper during this period. During this period, he's been helping us. He's been helping me. He's been helping you. 
the Alpha and the Omega. Father, we bless you. We honor you. You are our voice of hope. You are our voice of hope. Our voice of hope now in this period. Father, we honor you. We adore you. We, we say thank you, Jesus. You are the you are the arrester. You are the arrester. You are the arrester. Yes. You are the arrester of all the evil that is going on around us. You arrest the people who know me or know me. Father, we bless your holy name. You are the master builder. You are the master planner. You are the master minder. Hey, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. The all-powerful God, the excellent God. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you. We thank you. We invite you to our meet today, O oh Lord, because you are praiseworthy. Lord Almighty, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. I will enter these gates with a given in my heart. I will enter his cause with praise. I will say this is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I am so glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Ah, hallelujah. He has made us glad. We are so glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Why don't you just sing the song of thanksgiving to him and thank him, thank him, thank him for this beautiful month of May. Thank you for all that he has done. Lord Almighty, accept our praise, O Lord. Accept our thanksgiving, accept our worship. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. In Jeremiah 3 he says, He said, Call on me and I will answer you. And he promised us that I will show us great and mighty things which we do not know. I believe you and I, like I mentioned earlier, we've never seen this month of May 2020 before. But God says, If you call on him, he will show us great and mighty things that we do not know. So we want to pray and tell God. That whatever it is that God has planned for ahead of you in the month of May, that has planned ahead for me in the month of May, that it will surely come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to pray. So Father Lord, you promise us that we should call on you and you will answer us. You will show us great and mighty things that we do not know in this month of May. Lord Almighty, you are the God of revelation. Begin to reveal things to us. Begin to reveal things to us. Show us your favor. Show us your joy. Show us your peace. Show us that which we do not know. Order our steps, O oh Lord. Direct us. Instruct us. In the mighty name of Jesus. You said we should call on you and you will answer us. We want to hand our prayers, prayers of that. That Lord will believe that we are calling on you now. That you will show us the things that we do not know. That means you will order our steps. You will instruct us. We will hear clearly from you, O oh Lord. Father, we bless your holy name. We come against any spirit of doubt, any spirit of unbelief in our midst. We come against it in the name of Jesus. I say, Lord, Lord Almighty, we we'll alter our mindset for this new month in the mighty name of Jesus. We will believe you more. We will serve you more. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Hallelujah. I want us to pray for forgiveness of sin. None of us is righteous. You know, none of us can even stand before him. So we want to pray that God will cleanse us as fresh for this month. Cleanse our hearts. Cleanse our thinking. That deep thought that you had last night, that deep thought that I had last night, that did not glorify God. Lord Almighty, we pray for you to cleanse our hearts. We are here before you. Lord Almighty, we are here before you. We, we pray that you cleanse us, cleanse our hearts, cleanse our home, cleanse our thoughts, cleanse everything that we do this month, oh Lord. That, so that everything will be, so that everything will glorify you. Father, we bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now we want to pray for open heavens for the month of May. We want to declare the heavens to be open over us, over my household, over your household. Open heavens. When we operate under open heavens, things begin to flow. Things begin to change for good. The glory of the Lord will be, will begin to see the glory of the Lord overwhelming us in our homes, in our lives. So we want to pray for open heavens for the month of May. We are taking to a ship. We want to exercise our kingdom authority and say the heavens over the month of May begin to open over us. Begin to open in my household. Begin to open in your household. Begin to open over our children, over our men, over our youth. In the mighty name of Jesus, let us experience testimonies. Let us experience open heavens. 
where they have where, where they have said no before, let them begin to say yes. In the mighty name of Jesus, begin to pray. Open heavens over the month of May. Open heavens over the month of May. Begin to speak into your atmosphere. That in my home, you can mention your address. Begin to speak over your, your atmosphere. Then this month of May, we will experience open heavens. Open heavens in the mighty name of Jesus. Open heavens in the mighty name of Jesus. When, open, when you have open heavens, you begin to experience supernatural shifts in some things. Things that cannot be possible before, you just realize that you can do them with ease. So we want to pray for supernatural shift in all that we do in the mighty name of Jesus. All those things that has been that has been stagnant for years begin to shift in the month of May. Begin to shift as we pray now. Begin to shift in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to shift in the mighty name of Jesus. I have prayed. Amen. Now we want to pray. We pray for open heavens. We want to pray for turn around. We want to pray a prayer of turn around. <coughs> in all that we do and with everything that is going on in the whole world. We are going to rely on Psalm 71. It reads, In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline your head to me and save me. Be my strong refuge to which I may resort continually. You have given the commandment to save me, for you are my rock and my refuge. Deliver me, O Lord, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the righteous and the cruel man, for you are my hope. O Lord, my God, you are my trust from my youth. But you, but you, I have been up, upheld from birth. You are he who took me from my mother's womb. My praise shall continually be to you. I want us to ponder on the word trust there. That God says we should put our trust in him. And we are now saying, Lord, in you we put our trust. In you we put our trust. We rely on you totally for the month of May and even beyond. So we want to pray for turn around prayer. That Lord, we want to believe. You might not see it, we might not feel it, but we just want to believe God for a turnaround prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Because you, it was so difficult for Anna, but you made her fruitful. It was so difficult for Joseph, but you made it for her. It was just so difficult for David, the Goliath that David was seeing was so strong, was so mighty, but he, he, you made it for David. David became a rich man. I can go on and on and on and cite some examples, even in, a, in, in, in this very day. But God is still God. That is the good thing about it. He's still God. He can never change. The same yesterday, today, and forever. So we are going to pray that God will turn things around for our nation. God will turn things around for in our homes. He will turn things around for our children, for our spouses. In the mighty name of Jesus, begin to pray that God this month, this month of May, Lord Almighty, you will begin to turn things around for us. Our finances will be turned around for good. In the mighty name of Jesus, our relationship with you, Lord Almighty, you will turn it around for good. In Jesus' name, begin to pray that this month God will connect us with our helpers. This month God will decorate you and I. This month God will celebrate us. In the mighty name of Jesus, this month I decree and I declare God will announce you. God will announce you. God will announce you for good. God will announce you for good. You will have divine advertisement this month in the mighty name of Jesus. God will hear us this month. God will lead us this month. God will help us this month. God will guide us this month. God will elect you this month. God will name you this month. He will crown you this month in the mighty name of Jesus. He will direct you. He will locate you. He will select you. He will perfect you. He will heal you. God will correct you this month. He will rescue you. He will defend you. He will protect you. He will change you. He will liberate you. He will restore you. He will release you. He will promote you in the mighty name of Jesus. And above all, God will support you this month. Father, we bless your holy name for all this turnaround that will happen in the month of May. We are not saying it because in our own power, but we rely on Psalm 71. 1. In you, O oh Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. So all these prayers, Lord, we put them in your hands. That will never, ever, ever be put to shame. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Isaiah 65, 24 says, It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer, and while they are still speaking, I will hear. So we are going to rely on that verse 
that it shall come to pass that before we call on him, he will answer us. We want to pray for the nation. We want to pray for people who are affected by COVID-19. We want to pray for all our health workers. Now begin to raise your voice and begin to pray that Lord Almighty will pray for everyone that is affected with this. That God Almighty, you will be their comfort. People have lost their loved ones. Lord Almighty, I will pray that you put a stop to this speedily and suddenly in the name of Jesus. I, I always say that COVID-19 came suddenly and it will live suddenly in the name of Jesus. We just woke up one day and we read it in the news. I pray and I decree and I declare that we we'll just wake up tomorrow as well. We will just see it in the news that it has gone. Because it's only God that can do this. So let us begin to pray for those who are affected at this time. A lot of people lost their job, lots of income, you know, lots of uh, lots of faith. Even a lot of people have lost their faith. Let us begin to pray, to pray, to pray, to build people up. Let people's faith be built up in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, those who are affected, Lord Almighty, please comfort them. Be their helper. Speak to them even in their dreams. Let them know that you are the one that you are the only one that we can trust. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Quickly, we are going to pray for all our health workers, the doctors, the nurses, the carers, the cleaners, the security, the admin, everyone in the hospital, all the frontliners who want to pray and cover them in the blood of Jesus. I said, death will not snatch any one of them away again in the mighty name of Jesus. We cover them with the blood of Jesus. They are going out is blessed and they are coming in is blessed. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Now we pray for the leaders. We want to pray for, for wisdom in decision making that they will lead us aright in every single nation in, in the UK, in Nigeria, in America, everywhere. The Lord God Almighty, you will lead them in decision making, making. You will give them wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. They will understand times and season. They will not just copy and paste, you know, policies, but they will understand time and seasons. And they will understand our need, oh Lord. Lord Almighty, begin to speak to our leaders' hearts. Begin to speak to their hearts right now that they will make decisions that will benefit us. They will make divine decisions. They will hear your voice, O oh Lord. That still voice, O oh Lord, whether they are Christians or not, I don't, I, it doesn't matter. All I know is that it's, 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 it's one God and God will speak to them. God can speak to them. There's nothing God cannot do. With Him, all things are possible. That Lord Almighty, there will not be any error of judgment. There will not be mistakes in decision making. They will hear divine instructions. That listen, do this, why we do this, but, um, but we don't seem do that. That is what we, we are believing God for. That they will hear divine instruction so that they will not lead us as prayed during this period. In the mighty name of Jesus, begin to pray for our leaders. Rashe kre po hipa kontro, she kre po hipa se. Rashe kre po hipa kansia hira kere mama mama. All our leaders will hear, they will hear from God. They will not hear the evil voice in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, they will understand. They will understand times and seasons. They will not make the decision in a, in, a, in an hasty manner, oh Lord. They will wait on you. They will hear from you, so that they will lead us right in Jesus' mighty name. I am afraid. And lastly, we are going to pray that God will overrule every evil agenda for the month of May. Every second in the month of May, every minute in the month of May, every hour, every day, every week till we reach the end of May. You will not be missing. I will not be missing. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will not. I will not come and greet you. I will not come and. I will not come and sorrow over. Any, I will not sorrow over any one of you, and you will not sorrow over me. In the mighty name of Jesus, this month of May will be a glorious month for us. It will be a wonderful month for us. None shall be missing. None shall be missing. None shall be missing in the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil agenda that has been planned for the month of May. Every single day, Lord Almighty will cancel it with the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over every single day. We plead the blood of Jesus ahead of us. Over our babies, over our children, over our youth, over our men, over our women. Blood of Jesus. All over the world, blood of Jesus. 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 It will be a wonderful, wonderful month for us. It will be a month of testimony for every household. Every household in the whole world will, have, will testify to the glory of God. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. And I'm going to leave you with number 6, 24 to 26. And it reads, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you. And, be, and the Lord will be gracious to you. The Lord will lift his countenance upon you. And God will give us 
Hallelujah. The peace of God, pure peace, will be our portion. Enjoy your month. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.
so It gives me joy It gives me love It keeps me safe It keeps me safe It keeps me safe You keep us safe Keep us safe, oh. Keep us safe, oh. You keep us safe, oh. You keep us safe, oh. You keep us safe, oh. Hey, 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 my God is good, oh. Have you heard? Have you heard? Have you heard? You must have heard. Have you heard? You must have heard. Have you heard? You have not heard. Have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given us the victory. That's why we sing, Oh Shay. Have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given us the victory. That's why we sing, Oh Shay. Oh Shay. No for 
you have bestowed on our lives you have provided us with more than we could ever have imagined you have surrounded us with people who always look out for us you have given us family and friends who bless us every day with kind words and actions father lord we exalt your name we magnify your name we lift up your name O lord god we are forever grateful we thank you jehovah god we are grateful for your blessings in our lives Father, we pray, Lord God, that you remind us of just how blessed we are and that we will never, never forget to show our gratitude in prayer. Father, Jehovah God Almighty, we love and we magnify your name. Thank you for a wonderful time in your presence. Thank you for the praise and the worship. Thank you for the air we breathe in. Thank you for the food. Thank you for the drinks. Thank you, Lord God, for direction, for protection, for provision. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for who you have been. And thank you, Lord God, for who you will continue to be in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have worshipped. Amen, amen, amen. So welcome to the month of May. This is the month of the superpower. So this month, I pray that we shall receive divine meal for victories and multiplications in the mighty name of Jesus. It shall be a glorious month for us all in Jesus' mighty name. Here are the announcements for today. I just want to remind us that there will be no Sunday school service after this service because the Sunday school are worshiping with us. So no Sunday school service after the service today. But the youths would still have their service. So the youth service will still meet at one o'clock, their usual time. And details on how to meet will be on the screen. And please encourage your young ones to join and God bless you as they do so in the mighty name of Jesus. From Tuesday, the 5th of May, so 5th, the 6th and the 7th, we're going to have something called the Fresh Power Nights. Fresh Power Nights is on Tuesday, the 5th, Wednesday, the 6th, and then Thursday, the 7th. And the program will start from 11.30 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. It's a super power night please make sure that you join it's going to be via zoom and details of this should be on the screen please make sure that you put this in your diary and attempt to join this and the lord will bless us all there's a, a reminder that this wednesday is our habitat of worship um, this is where we just worship god for one hour um, so one hour of worship, which is a habitat of worship, is on Wednesday from 7 
p.m. Finally, I just want to say that um, there are so many people doing so many things to support us, to help us in different ways and to make everywhere safe for us. So we do have our own little appreciation video put together just to say thank you. The Lord, I feel led to take the Thanksgiving offering, offering because some of us may feel, oh, there's no one giving offering beside me. There's no one um, dancing to the front. You are your house. This is your temple. This is your sanctuary. And the, the tabernacle of David that has fallen in your life will rise up in the mighty name of Jesus. So I just feel like I should take the offering today. I should take the offering and give generously. God loves a generous and a cheerful giver. And I feel like to read Psalm 150, this is the passage I sent around today for us prayer, just to thank God. He said, everything that has bread, praise the Lord. You can just say, Lord, I am giving you this offering. I'm faithful by paying my tax. I'm faithful by giving an offering. I'm faithful by, re by redeeming the pledge. I'm faithful by just giving, just giving to you. I just want to give to you, and I'm going to read Psalm 150. It says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty family. Praise Him for His mighty art. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the lute and harp. Praise Him with timbrel and dance. Praise Him with string instruments and flute. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Praise Him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just want you to, 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 to give on to the Lord today. Just to, 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 to put the devil to shame. I'm still having breath. I'm still able to give. I'm still able to be faithful. And I'm still able to be obedient. Because this month, I must enjoy that superpower. Praise the Lord. God bless you. The details of, the, of the, our account will be shown on the screen. And you help us to give generously um, by electronic transfer. And God will bless your giving. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. It doesn't matter what is going on out there. What is happening. It doesn't matter what the situation is right now. Just know that the Lord has loved you. He's got you. He's got the whole world in His hands. And we only believe in the report that He and the good word. Praise the Lord.
morning church this song that i'm about to sing it's a manifestation of the power of god in my life and as i sing this song i hope that you'll be truly blessed
blessed assurance.
the Lord. It's truly a pleasure to be able to um, come before the throne of grace this morning to be able to share the word on this Thanksgiving day. Uh, we are told we are thankful, we are appreciative of the Lord's doing in our life, we are grateful to be able to um, rejoice in the Lord not rejoicing in the world alone but we are rejoicing in the lord being assured that um he's faithful to keep his word so i want to welcome you to this wonderful thanksgiving and i'm sure you've enjoyed all the songs and the worship and the prayers and i know that the little time that i have with you uh the lord will um settle you and the Lord will position you for blessing. God had revealed to us that this year uh, will be reassured of his covenant, everlasting covenant of mercy, of grace, and of honor. So I just want to assure you again that there is nothing happening now that God had not foreseen. Uh, he sees the end from the beginning. God is not caught by surprise. God cannot be surprised. Um, he sees you, he knows you, in you, um, he, he knows that there's a child there waiting and wondering and asking many questions. But he just asked me to assure you that he's ever present uh, in times of trouble. And he want me to assure you again that this phase uh, will pass and the time of honor is around the corner. In fact, I say to people that we have entered into a season of grace. Grace is indeed your portion. Uh, mercy is your portion. Uh, look, mercy and grace combined together certainly will bring honor to you. And when honor is revealed, then you will rejoice again and offer thanks to the Lord. When honor uh, is revealed, you will not only rejoice, you will have the crown of God's favor upon your head. You know, uh, when mercy has done its work, grace opens you up for honor. So I need you to allow uh, grace to work the wonders in you so that you can also partake or be partaker in the honor that Christ has for you. Again, I say, he that has started a good work in you is faithful to complete it. This month, uh, the Lord says to us that uh, the theme is superpower. So you can say May, which is the fifth month, the month of grace, is the month that I receive divine mail of, of awesome power, a special anointing to go further, to journey further, to, to not be tired, not to be faced by anything. Uh, because we still have a lot of months ahead. The journey is still ahead. So God is going to be helping us to energize, re-energize, to fire us up so that once we are released uh, from the lockdown and the social distancing, we can go back to rejoice, to dance, and to celebrate, to celebrate the Lord. So uh, this month, you are going to be served with divine meal. You are going to serve be served with divine meal and the Lord will, will use that meal to fortify your body, to fortify your body, to, to, to wake you up from your sleep so that you will be assured that indeed it's looking after you. It's got your back. It's got your back. And you will find that theme in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses um, 5 to 8. 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 5 to 8. Just as Elijah was um, refreshed and re-energized, you also will, you will receive that superpower to continue. You will not be tired in Jesus' name. But today I want to talk about grace. I said to you, God has said to us that we're going to be talking a lot uh, of, of mercy and of grace and of honor. So today I want to talk about grace. God has given me this word and I announced this in church. I think the month of March at the beginning I said, the month of March, we're going to be favored by grace. We're going to be favored 
by grace. Grace is going to overwhelm us. Grace is going to cover us. Grace is going to um, reassure us that we are not forsaken or left behind. So um, the scripture that the Lord gave me is found in John 2, 52. John 2, 52. And, and I'll read it out. John 2, 52. It says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God. Amen. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to come before you, to offer our praise, to offer our thanksgiving to you, to come in contact with you, to eat of your food, to dine at your palace, to dwell in your presence, because we know that in your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand, pleasures forevermore. So today we have come for pleasures. We have come for joy. We have come to be re-energized. We have come to enjoy grace and mercy. We have come to be honored. So we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, as we partake in this word, let this word bring life to us. Let it bring a love to us. Let it bring the energy, positive energy that is necessary to, to, to crown this day, this day of thanksgiving uh, with joy. Let it bring dancing to our steps. Let it bring a reassurance those who feel hopeless, let it bring hope. Those who free, feel um, downcasted, let, let them be raised, let them be encouraged. Those who feel depressed, let, let them be reassured in every way that indeed your grace indeed is sufficient for us. So Father, we thank you. We thank you. We ask that this world will come with love, it will come with power, it will come with deep conviction. That at the end of this message, Lord, you will receive glory, you will receive honor. You will receive adoration and you will reserve the blessings of the day and of the month to us. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says, Jesus increased in wisdom. He increased in wisdom. He also increased in stature and in favor with God and men. So not only with physical men, but with spiritual being. The Bible says, Jesus increased in wisdom. Now, I just want to say to someone today that uh, no matter the circumstances of your life, you are increasing in wisdom. You are increasing in wisdom. You are also increasing in stature. It may be that you used to be a person of no significance. Let me assure you today, you are going to be someone substantial. You are going to be someone of significance in the mighty name of Jesus. And favor will be with you. Favor will guide you. Favor will, will, will overwhelm you. Favor will surround you like a shield. That's my uh, assurance to you today. That's my assurance to you today. It grows in wisdom. The NLT translation in Luke 2.40 uh, says, grace was with Christ. Grace was with Christ. And it says, and the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. So not only did Christ grow in wisdom, not only did he grow in stature, not only did he grow in favor, not only did favor um, of God was upon him, and the favor of man was also upon him, the Bible also says that grace was upon him. So I say to, to, to people, I say grace and favor, they work hand in hand. They, they can be used interchangeably. Favor and, and grace. Favor is of God is something that you cannot work for. You, you cannot um, say you have achieved. It's not by your work. It's not by your righteousness. It's not by your education. It is something that God bestowed on you. And the grace of God is, is something that you have not worked for. It's a gift that you have not deserved. That, that is what uh, Luke 2, 20, uh, 40 was saying. He said, favor was upon Christ. Grace was upon Christ. And I grew and became strong in spirit. So I say, my brothers and my sisters, be strong in spirit. Be strong in spirit. Be filled with wisdom. Be filled. Wisdom is the principal thing. So I say, be filled with wisdom. And let the grace of God be upon you. Be upon you. Grace is, is immense. Grace is the greatest uh, joy of the Christian. Grace is the greatest joy of salvation. That despite our sins, despite our 
uh, inadequacies, despite that we have dwelt in the kingdom of darkness, God deem it fit to send his only begotten son to drive us back, to pull us back from the precipice of disaster. I found something in Ephesians 1, 7 to 8. Ephesians 1, 7 to 8. This is what it says. It said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. He blessed us with every spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. You hear that? God blessed with every spiritual blessing. And one of the things um, that he did was to choose you even before the foundation, before beginning began. He chose you. That is grace. He chose you. You did not deserve uh, deserve to be chosen, but he chose you that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. We should be holy without blame. You are blameless. You you are blameless. You 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 are chosen to be blameless. Look, he said to to without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself. So we are engrafted to Jesus Christ, to himself. We have become sons and daughters of the living God according to the good pleasure of his will. It is by will, not by our own works. It is by will. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In verse 7 it says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches, and that's where I'm going, according to the riches of his grace. His grace is full of riches, is available, is surplus, is there for you to partake in, which he made to abound towards us, abounding towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Brothers and sisters, let me give you something on this Thanksgiving day. You are secured in his grace. His grace is abounding in you. His grace is abounding. It's, it's something that you, are, you have not deserved. It's something that you have not worked for. But the Bible says his grace abounds in you. It abounds in you. And that's, that's a good thing to, 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 be, to, be, to be proud of. That's a good thing to rejoice in. That's a good thing to celebrate. So no wonder when God says he has an everlasting covenant of mercy, of grace, and of honor. God cannot lie. He's not man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Once he has said it, he will bring it to pass. So do not be afraid. Do not be jittery. Do not be uh, discouraged because his grace is upon you. In Ephesians 2, 4 to 8. Ephesians 2, 4 to 8. Uh, let me read it. Uh, this is even more powerful. Ephesians 2, uh, verses 4 to 8. He said, But God, who is rich in mercy, you see that riches of his grace. Then he said, God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, we were dead in trespasses, but because God is rich in mercy. There's no desert of mercy in him. There's no um, lack of mercy in him. Uh, he had great love and he used that great love. He, he used the, the, the immense love that he has for us to bestow us as his sons, who are daughters as his sons and daughters, even when we're dead in trespasses. He made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And let me add verse, verse 7. He said that in the ages to come, you might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. I want you to know that what kindness Kindness is like a cousin of grace and of mercy. God has to reveal his kindness for us. He has to uh, look at you with kindness for us before you can begin to enjoy mercy, before you can begin to enjoy grace and before you can be honored. So he says, but for by grace, verse 8, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And that's not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Lest anyone should boast. I don't want to boast in my work. I don't want to boast in my power. I don't want to be, I, want, I don't want to boast in my knowledge. Uh, if I was left 
to the devil. The devil will consume him within a second. But God, in his infinite mercy, with a heart full of love, saw us, showed kindness, showed mercy, and then take us as his son. So I, I just want you to, to have full confidence that his grace is sufficient for you. His grace is sufficient for you. And his mercy is in abundance. His mercy is in abundance. So if you can do it, then it's not, that's not grace. If you as a human being can perform that feat, if you as a human being can achieve that grace, if you as a human being can go um, that 100 years, can go that 400 years, then that is, not, that is not grace. That is human achievement. But when God bestows his grace upon you, you are favored. You are favored. You are loved. It is not by your power. It is not by your might. It is by the Spirit of the Lord. So I, I, I say here, I say when you recognize that it is God that is asking you to do something, and you do it by faith. You see, you see that it said through faith, and you do it by faith. You have entered into the into the realm of grace when you know that God is asking you to do something. I don't know what the Lord is saying that you should do in this month of May. I don't know what He's saying to for you to do in your business, in your family. I don't know what He's saying that you should do for your children. I don't know what He's saying even for your life. And you go ahead and do it by faith. No matter what the word is saying, no matter what the circumstances is, if you do it and you do it by faith, you have entered into a realm of grace. You know, anytime we face challenges, as many people will face, uh, you are facing now, um, you have you probably have faced in your business, you probably have faced in your in your marriage, you probably have faced in your life generally. Anytime we face problems, anytime we face challenges, and we ask God. Are you asking this of me? Are you using this to test me? Um, are you using this to test me? Are you using? Are you speaking to me? Are you? Are you asking me to do something? Um, uh, the thing that you should be saying is, Lord, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you for this moment. I just want to thank you for uh, for coronavirus, for COVID nineteen. I just want to thank you for the situation that we're going through. I, I know that this is not. Uh, meant for my destruction because you have assured me that I will receive honor. This is not meant for me to collapse and to die. This is meant to challenge me somewhere. And I want to thank you for it. I want to, I want to thank you for it. I want to accept it as a way of, of entering into your realm of grace. It, it is not a time to run away from a spiritual challenge. It is not. This is not the time to be discouraged. This is not, to, this is not the time to say, thus far, I've gone, I'm not going again. It's not the time to say, no, 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 no. Jesus saw the cross and he still went for it. He saw the, the pain and he still went for it because of that grace. And it's the same thing that I'm saying to you today. See that grace, see that grace of wonder, see that mercy of joy and go into it. You will enter by faith into a, a different realm of grace, into, into a different realm of grace. When you accept this kind of challenge, you grow in stature. You grow in stature. You become confident. You become confident. You become confident. You know, Hebrews 10, 37 to 38. Hebrews 10, 37 to 30, 38. And Habakkuk 2, 4 talks about the just will live by faith. The just will live by faith. In Habakkuk 2, 4, it says, Behold, the proud his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. It's only faith that we have. That's the only thing that we have to live by. We can't live by powers of the world. We can't live by connection in the world. We can't live by long leg. We can only live by faith and the grace that the Lord has bestowed on us. That is, you have entered into a realm of grace. You have entered this one into a realm of mercy. You have entered into a realm of honor in the mighty name of Jesus. The psalmist says something in Psalm 84. Psalm 84, verse 11, Psalm 84, verse 11. For the Lord God is a son and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, the Lord God is a son and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Just walk uprightly by his faith. And then God will show himself forth to you as a son. He will show himself forth to you as a shield. He will be faithful to give you grace and to give you glory. He will be faithful to give you grace and to give you glory. Hallelujah. I'm so, I'm so fired up this morning. I'm so, so, I'm so inspired because I can see the faith months. 
I've overcome January, I've overcome February, I've overcome March, I've overcome April, and now in the fifth month, the month of grace, the fifth month, the month of grace, I'm so, so, so inspired. And I think the same thing should, should, be, should be making your heart beat, to beat with joy, that in a 12 month calendar, you have overcome four months and you are overcoming May. And you will overcome June, July, August, September, October, November, December, in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall celebrate 2021 together. We will not fail. We will not fall. We will not die. We will not be sick in the mighty name of Jesus. We will not be forsaken. So go ahead and do what you are called to do. Go ahead and do what you are called to do. You know, I, I just I just ask myself as I read the Bible and I research into this. You know, there is always a question. That God is asking. It's either a type of Christ or a type of God will ask as individuals in the Bible. But God is always asking. Look at the case of Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth in 2 Samuel 9. 2 Samuel, if you recall, in 2 Samuel 4, 4, uh, a nurse was taken, Mephibosheth as a child, was running away from the war front, and the nurse fell, and the boy fell, and the boy became crippled. And we know that. David went um, to that place and asked him, and said, is there anyone still alive in Jonathan's family that I can show kindness to? So that question came first. Is there anyone still alive in Jonathan's family that I can show kindness to? Look, that kindness did not just come. That kindness came because of the covenant relationship between David and Jonathan. And we know David is a type of Christ. So that question will come. You will face many questions of life against the background of these circumstances that we're facing, the things, these challenges that we're facing. Many questions will come. Many challenges will come. Many things will be thrown at you. People will query your faith. People will say, why didn't you see it? People will say all sorts of things. That question will come. Know that a question that has come has an answer that is divine. David said, is there anyone remaining? And then Ziba said, there is one child who is slain in his legs. His name is Mephibosheth. You know, I, I just find that very, very important. You know where Mephibosheth was? Mephibosheth was in Lodiba. Lodiba was a place of forgetfulness, a, a place of desert, a, a, a place of no word. You know, where no one hears anything from God. A place that has been blocked away. A place that the sun has gone away. The moon has become dim. You know, the heaven has become brazen. No word. No word of encouragement. No word of joy. No word of dancing. No word of goodness. No word of, of harvest. Someone that was being primed up to become king eventually suddenly finds himself in low demand. His position was low. His life was demand from every great thing. The place was without Compassion. The place was without pasture. No green grass. No food. It's a place of disaster. It's a place of pestilence. It's a place of abuse. It's a place where man and woman uh, were, were cast down. The Bible says he was lame in his two legs. He wasn't lame in one. He was lame in his two legs. He was far away from his throne that he was prepared for. The place was without compassion. I don't know how aggressive these circumstances is for you. I don't know how painful, I don't know how confused you are. I don't know how much of yourself that you say and say, is this me? Why am I going through this suffering? I don't know the, the things that the enemy has thrown at you, left, right, forward, backward, center, all around you. I don't know how it's harassing, harassing your wife, harassing your children. I don't know the fear that has come inside you. But every time the question is asked, there is bound, if you can have faith, there is bound for you to open your doors into the realm of grace. The Bible says, David asks that Mephibosheth should be called. And of course, Mephibosheth was called. He himself did not believe that he was justified. Like many of us were far away into darkness, we're far away into, into weaknesses, we're far away into, into diabolical things, and God brought us back. We ourselves could not believe 
that Christ could find us in sin, in trespasses, in equity, and still use his blood to cleanse us. Mephibosheth began to enjoy in the king's palace. Despite his weakness, despite his limbless, despite his disability, he was taken away from Lodiba onto a high place. You know, favor is a good thing. When favor finds you, favor finds you out of darkness, draws you out. Favor is the light that finds you even in the most hidden hole. Favor is, 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 is that light. Favor takes you from low to high. Because of mercy, because of grace. Fever takes you from shame to honor. And I seem same thing to someone. You may be in a place of darkness. Fever will hit you today. Fever will track you down today. Fever will find you out today. Fever will take you from that low place where you are, that low deep where you are. It will take you out because your trespasses have been forgiven. Your iniquity have been forgiven. You have been assured of that crown. And that crown of righteousness is firmly placed on your head. COVID-19 cannot remove you. You will not die. You will live to declare the word of God. Fever goes to the heart of the matter to bring what matter to the foremost. That's how I put it here. Favor goes to the heart of the matter to bring what matter to the foremost. Look at how grace is working in the life of Mephibosheth. Look at how mercy worked in his life. Favor came from kindness and searched the heart of the matter and brought him out to the forefront from a hidden place to a place of limelight. And it's the same question that it's been asked from time in memoria. God asked Adam the same thing. Despite all the splendor and goodness um, that Adam enjoyed in the Garden of Eden, he fell. He fell. In Genesis 3.9, Genesis 3.9, when God was going to help him out, even though God had cursed them, but God will not leave you cursed. God will not curse your land forever. God will not be angry with you forever if his mercy is upon you, if his grace is upon you. In Genesis 3, 9, God asks, Adam, Adam, where are you? Don't forget that that question must come. But you must answer. You must have faith to answer. Don't look at your present position to determine your bright future. Your glorious future is assured. And that is where you are going. But you must answer that question. And Adam answered. He said, I'm hiding because I'm naked. Who told you you are naked? God said to him. He said, the wife that you've given me, gave me the fruit and I ate it. Look, forget about your nakedness. Come to Jesus. He has a merciful heart. He has given you mercy. He has adopted you as his child. It doesn't matter what the position of your life is. It doesn't matter how your financial situation is, your economic situation, your social situation. It doesn't matter how your family situation is. There is mercy in abundance. There is the riches of his grace. There is abundance of his honor that is secured for you. The Bible says, after Adam had answered that question, what did God do? He redeemed them. He redeemed them. He killed an animal and provided them with skin so that they would not walk around naked. You know, that nakedness that they recognized was a physical nakedness. But the cover that God gave them was a spiritual cover. Was a spiritual cover. He made to it of skin. God is going to give you spiritual cover today. God is going to give you spiritual cover today. Wherever you've been exposed, wherever you've been mocked, wherever people have cursed you, wherever you've been accused because of your sin, they are not your judge. God is your judge. And God is merciful. Mercy always triumphs over judgment. The Bible says God covered them with tunic. And the person that was asked that question was Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus in Mark 10, 46. You recall Bartimaeus, Jesus was passing with a lot of people around him. His disciples were guarding him, the bodyguards were there. Everybody was pressuring and pressing towards him. And Bartimaeus began to cry. Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus son of David, have mercy on me. Mercy that Christ 
hurt. The Bible says that word brought bad, uh, Jesus to a standstill. The disciples were saying to um, Bartimaeus, go, he's busy, go, don't worry, go, go, don't worry him, don't do this, don't do that. The Bible says that mercy cried out and Jesus stood still and went to him and asked that question. You have been asked that question today. What can I do for you? You think Jesus did not know that this man was blind? But that question must be asked. That question was asked in verse 51. What should I do for you? And Bartholomew said, That I may see. He didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for wealth. He didn't ask for healing. He didn't ask for anything other than the healing of the eyes. So that he will not only see physically, he will also see by vision. He will see his future. Man, if you're able to see your future, your present is painted to follow, to smooth, and to, um, to, to be alive with your future, you are made. Brothers and sisters, that question is being asked today. That question that will take you to your realm of grace is being asked today. Do not fail in answering it. And if you want to answer it, answer it by faith. But it was believe that Jesus Christ is the bastion of mercy and of grace, and it will honor him. That question was asked of the man by the pool of Bethesda in John 5. John 5, the man had been there for 38 years. He had been trampled on, he had been forsaken, he had been abandoned, he had been ridiculed, he has been there for so long. And in verse 6, John 5, 6, Jesus asked him, do you want to be made well? <laughs> Look, you've been in that position for long. Mercy is asking you questions. Grace is knocking at your door because your day of honor is here. Your day of honor. He said, my day of honor. He said, this month of May, I will be honored. Are you going to be honored? Shout a big hallelujah. He said, do you want to be made well? The man went into all sorts of excuses. Jesus said, look, rise up. Take your bed and walk. Look, it is very important that you understand that questions will come to test your faith. Questions will come to challenge you in your position. Make sure that faith allows you the privilege of answering rightly. Abraham was in discourse with, Jesus, with God in Genesis 18 when God was going to apply judgment to Sodom and Gomorrah. God was going to kill everybody there. Everybody. But God gave um, Abraham the privilege because God said, ah, would I do anything without telling my friend? And Abraham began to ask that question. If you look at Genesis 18, 16, Genesis 18, 16, the first question Abraham asked, would you also destroy the righteous from the wicked? Would you also destroy the righteous from the wicked? Suppose there were 50 righteous. And they were asking that question, answering, asking and answering, asking and answering. And that is how Lot and his family were saved from that destruction. As after 49, 24, as after 49, 24, series of questions. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Or the lawful captive deliver? Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? I don't know who has taken you. I don't know the mighty force that has taken you, taking your heart, taking your mind, taking your soul, taking your strength away. I don't know the mighty sickness that has taken you, that has brought you down. Be assured. Jesus is here with mercy. He's here with grace. He said, or oh, the lawful captive. This is how I always understand that. The lawful captive is someone you did it. You made that error. You failed in that positioning. That was an error of judgment. You really committed that sin. You have been captured because of what you did. But mercy is here for you today. You are going to be favored with grace. You are going to be favored with grace. But God says the Lord. Even the captive of the mighty shall be taken away. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. I speak to someone today. Whoever has held you captive, whoever has captured you, whoever has dug the, the ground and put you in, whoever has dug the pit for you, whoever has opened up forces of darkness to swallow you up, look, 
The grace of God will favor you today. The mercy of God will favor you today. The joy of the Lord will be your strength today. In the mighty name of Jesus, I say be delivered. I say be delivered. I say let this captive be taken away by the mercy of God and the grace of God. You are favored today. You are favored by grace. In Ezekiel 37, Ezekiel 37, when Ezekiel was walking around the dry bones, God showed him dry bones, an impossible situation. I don't know how impossible your situation. I don't know. You are not seeing anything good. You are dreaming. You are having nightmares. Every time you go out, you see darkness. You see everything has gone apart. The world is not standing together again. You are seeing dry bones. You don't have money. Your finances is not going well. You don't have work. You've lost your contract. You are seeing dry bones. The question is coming. That question is coming. That question that will prove whether you are faithful, whether you are fit. That question is coming. The Bible says, God asks Ezekiel, son of man, we are just men. We don't have any power other than the power that God has given us. We don't have any might. It's not by our power or by our might. It's only by the Spirit of God. Ezekiel, as powerful as he was, God called him the Son of Man. We are all sons and daughters of men and women. The Bible says, God asks him, can these bones live? Not in a thousand years would Ezekiel say the bones can live. No. He didn't have the capacity. God said to him, Can these bones live? Thank God for Ezekiel. He didn't even venture to answer. He said, You know all. Oh. My brothers and sisters, to enter into a realm of grace that God wants to favor you with today, there are occasions that questions will come that you cannot answer, but you have to give it back to God. God, you know all. People will ask you, Why are Christians dying? What is it? That this disease was not predicted, was not prophesied, was not seen. Pastors will be inundated with questions. Do not attempt to answer every question. The locations when you refer them back to God. God, you know all. God, you see all. And God will be faithful to you. Of course, the dry bones rose. They developed muscles. Their bone became energized. And they became alive like a strong animal. Brothers and sisters, what am I saying to you today? Hebrews 4, 16 concludes this part for me. I will, I will continue next week. It says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us come boldly. Come boldly. Do not look at your weak personality. Do not look at the things that are going wrong. Look at Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace. Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace. That is where the answer is. That is where we enter into the realm of grace. That is where the, the capacity that we have to explore, to exploit, to show the, the, the kind of children of God that we have, that is where it is. Come to the throne. I'm calling you today. Come to the throne of grace. Come to the throne of grace. Come and obtain mercy. Come and obtain mercy. God is generous in his mercy. His mercy is everlasting. His favor is unending. Come, my brothers and sisters, come and be favored. This month, God is going to serve you with a super meal. And you need to get close to that throne of grace. That is where he's going to wear or, 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 or wash away all your sins and your iniquity. That is where you find mercy. And that is where you find grace. And God, indeed, will help you at this time of your need. Amen. wait until you do me something oh lord i am ready to give you praise ready to give you praise thank you jesus say oh lord, oh lord i am ready to give you praise and no good
go away, I will go away until you do me something. Oh Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh Lord, I am ready to give you praise, ready to give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord, I am ready to give you praise. I will go away, I will go away until you do me something. Oh Lord, I am ready to give you praise, ready to give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I am ready to give you praise. I will go away.
got you cook oh, oh my little cham. I go one. Bullet ya, Bullet Jesus, yeah, Bullet ya, Bullet Jesus, Bullet Jesus, Bullet ya, Bullet Jesus. to again. I want to thank the Lord for your life. I want to um, encourage you once again that Jesus is on your side. So I'm going to make declaration, prophetic declaration for the month of May. For the month of May. I'm assured that indeed God that has seen you thus far will see you to the end of it and beyond in the mighty name of Jesus. So you can take your positions wherever you are now. Take your positions Take your positions as we normally do after uh, the last dance. I want to take and receive this this bountiful, this bountiful prayers um, for the month of May. My prayer is that um, found in Psalm 56, 3. It says, Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in God. 
Put your trust in God and He will not fail you. 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 The Lord will bless you. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will multiply you. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will shine. He, he, he make His face to shine upon you. The Lord will be gracious to you. The Lord will lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. You will have peace this month. You will have peace. You will not be threatened by anybody. You will not be condemned by anybody. No man will stick to you in the mighty name of Jesus. No man will stick to you. You are the priest of God. You are the priest of God. You may not be pastors. You may not be ministers. But as children of the Lord, you are priests in the, in the temple of the Lord. And no one will be able to attack you in the mighty name of Jesus. No one will be able to attack you in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, touch not my anointed. Psalm 105, 15. Psalm 105, 15. He said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. You will not be touched in the mighty name of Jesus. No physical harm will touch you. No spiritual harm will touch you in the mighty name of Jesus. You dwell under the grace of God. You dwell under the canopy of God. You, you will not be touched your spouse will not be touched, your children will not be touched, your businesses will not be touched, your career will not be touched in the mighty name of Jesus. I say, keep on praying, God will answer your prayer. God will answer your prayer. In the infinite mercy, He will answer your most pressing need in the mighty name of Jesus. Your fire of prayer, your oil of prayer will not burn out, will not be snuffed out in the mighty name of Jesus. This month of May, you will have testimonies. You will have testimonies. God will grant you wisdom. He will grant you understanding. He will grant you um, to grant you spiritual light in the mighty name of Jesus. He takes you out of darkness. He will take you into, into light. He has taken you out of darkness. He will take you into light in the mighty name of Jesus. Your children will not be rebellious. Your spouses will not be rebellious. Your businesses will not work against you. Your affliction will leave you. You will not be forsaken. You will not be afflicted. If you have been afflicted thus far, it will leave you. Receive your healing today in the mighty name of Jesus. Anyone that is entrapped in any ditch, anyone that has been held captive, by any terrible person, their terrible spirit, be released right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Be released right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I see someone being released now. I see you being released. I see you being released. I see you being released in the mighty name of Jesus. By fire, by force, be released in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, Lord will give you testimony that will make you worthy of emulations. Wherever they have condemned you, wherever they've ridiculed you, whatever they've said, even if they have sacked you from their job, be assured, God will make you worthy of emulation. God will make you faithful members of his kingdom. God will not condemn you, cannot condemn you. You will not be unfaithful to him. So he will make you faithful, loyal members. And he blesses his children, he will bless you. He said, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper, be in good health, as your soul prosper. You will prosper in wealth, you will prosper in soul, you will prosper in health in the mighty name of Jesus. You will be fortified from danger. This COVID 19 will not catch you, will not oppress you, will not harass you, will not kill you in the mighty name of Jesus. Anyone that is sorrowing, anyone that is grieving, re receive divine comfort. Right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive divine comfort. Receive divine comfort. Receive divine comfort in the mighty name of Jesus. My brothers and sisters, I've been assured that when we come back, we will be like those who dream. Our tears will have been taken away. Our testimonies will be full, will be live. Therefore, I'm assured that you will not die until you share that testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. In your family, you will receive unity. In the church, you will receive unity because that's where everlasting blessing is. Today, in the mighty name of Jesus, take your crown. Let the, your crown that you're taking away from you be restored to you in the mighty name of Jesus. You will be full of testimonies. Your heart will decide to win souls because you will taste and you will know the blessing of God, how sweet Jesus is. In the mighty name of Jesus, to your life, to your death, there are angels that are going to support you, that are going to defend you, that are going to fortify your home. I say the blood of Jesus is on your doorpost. No spirit of death will enter in the mighty name of Jesus. No spirit of death will enter. No spirit of death will enter. I see some people, you are being given contracts even whilst locked down. 
the mighty name of Jesus. You have been there to work from home and they will pay you generously. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive fresh power, receive superpower, receive divine power, receive power that will last you forever. That meal that you're going to be eating, that meal will bless you, that meal will energize you, that meal will refresh you, that meal will fire you up in the mighty name of Jesus. That meal will not kill you because there's no poison in that meal. If you take up serpent, you will not be hurt. If you drink poison, you will not be hurt in the mighty name of Jesus. This month is your month of grace. You will be favored by grace. It's your month that you will become super extraordinary. God will give you foresight, you'll be able to see the future, you'll be able to determine the future, you'll be able to know the way you shall go. God will make you prophet in your home. You'll be able to speak generously because God is whispering to you. You'll be able to shine. You will shine, your wife will shine, your children will shine, your business will shine in the mighty name of Jesus. And at the end of this season, when we will count ourselves and no one will be missing in the mighty name of Jesus. Your clothes will not be worn, your shoes will not have holes, you will not be tired, you will not be flat out tired in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that the fact of God in you will not be quenched. Be assured that this is the beginning of your glorious time. This is the beginning of your wonderful season. This is the beginning of your testimonies. And God will crown your year. God will crown your year. The favor of God will be upon you. The favor that was upon Mephibosheth, that was taken away from Lodiba, taken away from where there was no word, no compassion, no pasture, that favor is upon you. Wherever you are hidden today, God will, God's favor will drive you out. You will be showed forth. 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 You will be showed forth in the mighty name of Jesus. That's your portion. And that's my prayer for you. And God will bless you. God will honor you. And God will show you as a giant in his house. We will come back and share testimony. We will have our last dance. We will rejoice again. We will shake ourselves again. We will hug ourselves again. And we will say, God, indeed, you are faithful. To God be the glory. Amen.